This week we're celebrating Pentecost and a story of this kind. Uh, you just have to remember three things about this story. A story told in this fashion requires a great deal of imagination. So a dog this size could be friends with a man this size and they don't match but you just make that work in your head. And the second thing is to notice that there's no face here. So you can imagine what a follower of Jesus would have looked like in those times. And the third thing is to remember that we always invite the story with a song. Bible, Bible, tell your story, speak to us about God's glory. There's so much we need to know, tell us how God loves us. So, last week, Jesus had ascended up to heaven. It was Ascension Day. Rewinding back just a tiny bit before that, Jesus had told his disciples the last time he met them in that house in Jerusalem where they all liked to gather, he had told them that he was leaving the Holy Spirit with them there would be one more glorious act, but it would be after he was gone. So now we know that Jesus has breathed his breath onto them, and also that he has left them, waiting for one last miracle. This weekend in Jerusalem, it's called the Week of Feasts. It's one of three holy high days where the Jewish people gathered at the synagogue in Jerusalem. And the reason for the Week of Feasts is if you had planted wheat early in the year, then this is the celebration of the gathering of the first big bushels of wheat that will feed us throughout the year. So this is a celebration of good fortune and good weather and good eating. So people are gathering from all over the world. From as far away as Egypt, they are coming to Jerusalem to spend this high holy day at the second temple. All of them from all over, many, many roads gathering to come to the synagogue. Inside the house where they have spent so much of their time, our disciples are gathered. Jesus has gone and they're talking, wondering, what is this miracle? that's going to happen. They don't know what it is. They know that they're supposed to go out and teach. They know that the Holy Spirit is within them because Jesus left them with that, remember? It's in them. But what is the miracle that's going to happen? People are gathered all over. A festival day is going on. It's loud. It's busy. It's colorful. And all of a sudden, there they are in their house and from above descends the hand of God with a flame over the house. The flame comes down onto all of the disciples of Jesus and little flames are licking them and they look extraordinary. Imagine they have flames around them and there's the sound of wind. So much wind! Such loud, loud wind! And all the followers, all the people who are in Jerusalem come running out to see what's going on in this house, that there's all this extraordinary wind and noise coming from this one house. Oh my goodness, it's so loud! And the disciples come out as the wind dies down. Out they come, and they're covered with flame. And these people who are from everywhere speak so many languages. And what they realize is they can speak in every language that these people require. 
They have a new gift! An extraordinary gift! Oh my goodness! Such a babble! All these noises! All these languages! And the disciples are out of their minds crazy with this new ability of theirs! It is extraordinary! The babble was deafening! Absolutely deafening! Clearly, their gifts have been shown to the, all the folks in Jerusalem who are gathered and to whom the disciples are now able to talk, no matter where they're from. Any language of the world is theirs. Our disciples of Jesus will go on to spread his word everywhere. The disciples themselves go out to the four corners of the earth carrying Jesus' message. Very few of them will ever return to Jerusalem. They'll die far away from home, spreading the message, the message of Christianity. And the people that they talk to will also go out and spread the message of Christianity. So that today, we have a Christian religion that spans the entire world, the entire globe. And so today, Pentecost is considered, because it's the birth of Christianity, this day is considered the birthday of the church. Happy birthday, church. And that's the end of our story today. Bible, Bible, tell your story. Speak to us about God's glory. There's so much we need to know. Tell us how God loves us so. We have some takeaways today. One of the things that's talked about in the Bible is gifts, gifts that people have, gifts of so many things, storytelling or being able to dance or being able to draw, being able to speak, being able to heal. There are so many gifts that people have been given by God. And one of the things we need to do is think about what are those gifts? Moses himself didn't have the gift of speech. He handed off that job to his brother Aaron, who was a good speaker. Moses was the prophet, not the speaker. He found a speaker to help him spread the, spread the word of God's kingdom. So in trying to make the kingdom of God come closer to earth, or the earth to come closer to the kingdom of God, we need to give those gifts. We need to think about what they are, what are those things, those special talents we have, and appreciate the talents of others. And also, think about the people we're giving them to. Sometimes gifts have to be directed. Maybe your mom likes it when you write her a story. Maybe your dad likes it better when you take out the trash or feed the dog. The gifts are twofold. They are in you. That Holy Spirit is in you to raise up the Spirit of the Lord. And also, it's in the spirit of those who are receiving your gift. So you need to spend your gifts wisely. Happy Pentecost. Amen.